All right, Mr. Telefero TV, how's everybody doing out there? Isaiah Thomas, the story of Isaiah Thomas. Now, as we watch Kawhi Leonard and how he conducted himself with the San Antonio Spurs, you might not agree with his methodology of how he got out of San Antonio. You might not agree with him sitting out an entire season last year when doctors of San Antonio cleared him to play, but you do have to respect this and keep this in mind. The Isaiah Thomas story is real. It really happened a year ago. And guys around the league talk. I know Kawhi is a quiet guy, but he still is in NBA communities. People talk, and this Isaiah Thomas story rubs him the wrong way. Now, to give you a, beef, a brief backstory on what happened with Isaiah Thomas, this guy was the guy for the Boston Celtics uh, a year and some change ago. The Boston Celtics had found a way as the number one seed in the Eastern Conference, right? Behind Isaiah Thomas' heroic season. He averaged, what, 28, 29 points a game. He was going out crazy performances. That Boston Celtics team had exceeded expectations between Isaiah Thomas, Al Horford, and a young Jalen Brown, a rookie Jalen Brown. Remember, they were after Kevin Durant that, that, that offseason before, right? And they didn't get KD. So the expectations without Kevin Durant were maybe four fifth at best in the Eastern Conference. They exceeded that. Now around February, Isaiah Thomas bumped hips with Carl Anthony Towns. Reportedly at that point, an injury occurred. A hip injury that would plague Isaiah Thomas probably up until this day. We fast forward to the playoffs a year ago, right? Isaiah Thomas' sister dies right before the playoffs start. The number one seed in the Eastern Conference, um, I'm going to be honest with you, they were struggling against the Bulls, and their best player is dealing with the loss of his sister. Isaiah Thomas sucks it up. He gets back on the basketball court. He doesn't mourn, right? He doesn't mourn from a standpoint if he doesn't miss games. He gets back on the court a couple days later, and he plays basketball. Not only is he playing with a bad hip at this point in the playoffs, he's playing for the love of his sister. And his teammates. And that Celtics organization that he loved. He thought he finally found a home. Fast forward. We get to the to the Cleveland series, right? The Eastern Conference Finals. Isaiah Thomas' hips give, give out on him. Now, he looks up. And he's thinking, okay, all I got to do is train this offseason, get surgery, whatever. Celtics going to pay me. Kyrie Irving becomes available. The rest is history. They trade Isaiah Thomas. For Kyrie, he was injured in Boston. He probably shouldn't have played in the playoffs. He probably should have sat out after February. He played on a bad hip. He goes in the next year. Now he's on the Cleveland Cavalier team. January comes around. It, you know, LeBron's like, "Let's, what's up, Cleveland? We need to get this thing rolling. I'm trying to make the finals for the eighth straight year. What up, Cleveland? Isaiah Thomas is out. He finally comes back around January. Trade deadline is the top of February. Remember, for the, the, the trade deadline was pushed up to the top of February. Right, it was no longer after All Star Weekend, it's before All Star Weekend. They got the first week in February. You gotta make moves. LeBron's like, we don't got time to wait. This team can't get it done. They're struggling. They pull the trigger on Isaiah Thomas, trade him, and like five other veterans. They go out bring this new team in. So Isaiah Thomas now becomes a Laker. He starts to light it up for LA. Hip gives out on him again. He looks up one year later, he likely cost himself $120 million at least. Because he was trying to be loyal to an organization that in the end was not loyal to him. This is a business, man. I do not criticize players for leaving and going to other teams because I get it. It is a business. Isaiah Thomas recently did an interview with ESPN and he opened up about his journey, some of the things he's went through. And um, right now where he's at with, it, with, with his career as he is now a part of the Denver Nuggets organization. Really good content came out of this interview. I want to give you guys some quotables from it. Isaiah said, look, people are scared of my hip now. I just had to be real with myself. I had to understand that it's not going to be about the, the money this summer. I've got to show people that I can play and play at a high level again, and I will. If I didn't play in the playoffs, I'd be okay. I'd be getting paid. I'd be who I am, who I was. But you couldn't tell me in that moment, he's speaking back when he was on the Boston Celtics, with everything I was going through that, okay, I should just sit out. I don't think Boston went about it the right way as well. But at the same time, it was hard for me to sit out. I had just lost my sister, one of the closest people in my life. 
basketball was the only thing that was going to help me out. I played until I literally couldn't play anymore. And that was not a good business decision. It was if I was looking in the long term. But I was looking in the right now. That's just what it was. They probably would have traded me anyway. But I would have I would have been in a position to show my worth. And last year I was never in a position to show my worth. I understand it, but I don't accept it. So many other people get injured and get chance after chance again. They get the big break. They get the big money. No matter if they're injured, there's a lot of people out there who've gotten serious injuries and gotten paid still. In my circumstance, it was bad timing. You've never seen a little guy like me get paid big dollars. Never seen it in the NBA. People know that I've earned and deserved the max contract, and that's the only reason why I didn't get paid what I deserved because I got injured. I get that. The biggest thing for me was to get the best opportunity for me this summer and show that I am healthy. I thought this was interesting that I wanted to add to you guys. So Isaiah Thomas actually got on the phone with Boston's GM Danny Ainge, the guy who traded him, right? He said they talked uh, for about 15 to 20 minutes, and Isaiah said he told Danny Ainge, if the opportunity is there, I would like to let you know that I love to come back. He went on to say, uh, nothing that I did in the past can give, uh, be used to get a new contract. Everybody else can, but me, I can't. That's been my story. It's never been. Oh, let's pay him off what he's done. That's just what it is. That's the reality. I can't control that, but I can control taking advantage of an opportunity and showing that I can still play at a high level. For the record, the reason why the Boston Celtics never made a formal offer to Isaiah Thomas was because they were at the time in negotiations with bringing Marcus Smart back. The Celtics would only look to bring Isaiah Thomas back if Marcus Smart wouldn't have re-signed with the team. And it looked like they finalized a deal pretty much there. And um, Isaiah Thomas ended up signing with the Denver Nuggets. Tough story, man. But I look at, though I think Kawhi Leonard is incredibly quiet and sometimes um, unreachable, I don't. I, I don't get mad at what his end goal was. He wanted out of San Antonio because there was an organization there that he had given his all to seven, eight years, won a championship with, won a finals MVP, guarded LeBron in the finals and came out victorious, straight up and down. And that team believed he didn't want to play the game that he had loved his whole life, that, that he really wasn't injured, that he was just sitting out just because. And I, that's why I can't fault a guy like Kawhi for what, doing what he did. I don't like the way he went about it. But when you read a story like Isaiah Thomas, like I said, this dude probably lost out on over $120 million. And it's all because he was loyal to a team that was not loyal to him. I came from nothing, but I want everything God has for me. I interview celebrities. I talk sports. I still represent the culture. I got the kids. They are now tuned in. Tuned in. Yo, we locked in right now, Mr. Telefair. Mr. Telefair. Mr. Telefair. Mr. Telefair. Shout out to Mr. Telefair. You're watching Mr. Telefair TV. Mr. Telefair TV? Here with the Triple B's. You can't do nothing but win.